Are we ready? Yeah. Okay, here we go. So you heard me say a little bit earlier, there's a, a good group of conservative, business-friendly legislators that we work with on a, a regular basis. We barge into their office, we beg for meetings, they help us out, and they and I'm, I've got one over here that I'm gonna tell you has been my tutor when I will listen. <laughs> Our state rep, Valerie Swanson, one of the most conservative in the legislature, a member of the Freedom Caucus, has been just a guide to everyone around BizPAC. People go to the Capitol without me, and they're, they're still moving along, and her and her office helps them get down the road. Sometimes we need help getting a meeting with a, another rep we don't know yet or something like that. Um, and we can get a good feel on on uh, bills that we're trying to help move through or make a change to. Sometimes BizPAC is just trying to make a change to the way the thing is worded. There was one bill that we were working on that we just wanted one word changed, you know, um, as an example, because it changed the whole dynamic of the bill, and that was this um, silly bond reform thing. And they, they, what they did with the lobbyists, the, these are Soros-funded lobbyists, what they did is they slipped three different bills in both houses under different names, so we couldn't we did, couldn't easily track them. But it was essentially the same bill, and that's how they actually got one through uh, without making the change that we wanted. So we learned something there. But so I would like to I'd like to introduce you to if you don't know Representative Swanson, come, come on up and. Hey. So Representative Swanton, like I said, you know, she's put up with me for years. Yeah, you poor and, baby. And she's and there there are people in this room that have been in her office working on things, and, and it's literally work. You know, we we it's literally work, a transfer of information. She is the uh, uh, she is the representative that when Senator Creighton walked a group of us down on the floor of the Senate to get a briefing for an hour and a half. She's the one that brought us to the door and did the official handoff with a secret handshake. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you don't mind, tell us a little bit about your candidacy that's coming up, you know, why you even got involved in politics. Give just a couple minutes like that. Well, thank you, Joe. I appreciate you mm -hmm. introduction there. And this pack, and you in particular, have just really been amazing mm -hmm. to go. The, as quickly as you've grown and as quickly as you've caught on of how to be effective and the research you guys do and get out information on candidates, bills, issues, that is just so very, very helpful and I really appreciate that. And I grew up as involved in volunteering in conservative Republican politics. Literally, my mom was very, very involved, um, had me involved as a child, but then ever since I moved to Houston as a young adult right after college, got into um, just really being involved in the Republican Party, picking candidates, getting the word out about them, getting them elected, and trying to influence for good policy. And then in 2015, um, after that session, people started coming to me and saying, we really need you to run for uh, state representative, and I will say during all that time of volunteering, I was a Republican precinct chair about 23 years, uh, state Republican executive committee woman for eight years, and one of those things, it really helped a lot because I'd been there in the trenches. Everybody knew exactly what kind of candidates I like, what I stood for, what I fought for on the platform. They didn't have to wonder like, oh, where'd you come from, and how do we know what to believe you? And I would just really urge all of you to get involved like that. And Mark Dahl will be a, be a good source to tell you about that. <laughs> and if you care, don't wait until session. We need to be getting prepared for session, but we have to get good people elected now. Find candidates, find your local precinct chair, be a precinct chair if you need one, and get involved. And if you're not doing something from that perspective, we need every one of you on deck November the 8th. Everybody should put it on your calendar, take off work, and um, if you're not working in a for the party getting people out, you're not working for a candidate, 
You should be inside the polls somewhere. Absolutely. You yes, should absolutely. be an election judge. You gotta volunteer early and get trained. An alternate judge, uh, and they will send you to other precincts where we have trouble with a lot of fraud. We need clerks. We need poll watchers. And we can have perfect machines. We can have perfect bills. And the machine thing is really, really, you know. Mm -hmm. But we're improving all that. But there is, they mostly cheat on mail ballots. Right, and things right. that happen in the polls, like, you know, you can recount. There are all kinds of things you can do. They can cheat like crazy yep. if we don't have enough eyes everywhere. And that's up to you guys. If you're up for more than November 8th, they need people during early voting to help run the polls. And there are things you can do right now. Uh, Alan Bear is looking for people to do computer research. You can work in the middle of the night. Mom to have kids can work from home. And they research and are trying to clean up the roles, the voting roles. They'll, what, what Alan Bear will do is they'll spot an anomaly or a trend of something that doesn't quite make sense. And then he's asking for volunteers to go dig in, do research and report back, which they then go do more research on about. Yes, so some of those people are doing it all on computer, and then other people take that information and they go knock on doors yep. and figure out, okay, we've got this place where you know, 16 people with five different last names are voting from there. But so they, um, you know, they go knock on the door and find out who actually lives there. Is this my third session? Hopefully, uh, and I'm running for my fourth, and I will ask to be on elections committee again. So oh. that is a big passion of mine. I also uh, passed House Bill 25 to stop the uh, biological males from ruining our girls' schools. Yeah. Okay. College, so I'm coming back this time oh, to protect, try to protect our college girl athletes. And biz, so there were BizPAC members who came up and testified when the bill came to committee, and we really, really appreciate that. It makes a big difference. It really does. When they, when you go up for this session, and I'm sure that I'm, I'm confident in your re-election. <laughs> you know, so I'm going to go ahead and congratulate you. Uh, but uh, uh, as you move into the session and. and those committee hearings come along, we're going to put the, the call out to get people up there to testify Wonderful. for that. Thank I am to expand it to not just high school, but uh, college as well. This was, that was another item that the governor gave a lot of pushback on. Right. And uh, to just get the bill done, they dropped it back to K-12, you know, but now we'll go, we'll take the rest of the elephant. We'll take it down. We look forward to working with you on that one and others. Same here. Thanks, now, now uh, Representative Swanson was a big, a big help to us. Remember, I showed you the, the bill. I gave you an example of where we had 98 uh, co-sponsors for this bill over in the House, and, or 99, and then we end up 2000. Uh, Representative Swanson is, uh, you know, she's she's an undercurrent many times when it's a, a bill that's you know, kind of pushing the edge with. The conservative legislators are comfortable with if it is the right thing morally and ethically and the science is behind it. And so I, I think of her more as a riptide. You know, it's the, it's the strongest part of the tide. Yeah. You know, that it's it's under the current. It's what it's where everything else follows it. And so we've been grateful to her influence there. I appreciate it very much. It's helped a lot of people out. And we're moving that whole uh, uh, area of testing. DPS testing in the area of medical, cannabis that heals, yes. heals human beings, treats pain, restores cells that have been destroyed. Uh, that is because of the work you're doing. So we're grateful. Thank you. Thank you, Valerie. All right. So we're going to go to another segment now.